discovered this notion of flow. So flow is this sense of creativity in which people are actually doing what they're doing. Um, and it's a sense that, um, that is extraordinarily important to us. And if someone says, yes, I really enjoyed that, what he or she really means is, yes, I was totally engaged in what I'm doing at the, at the time. So if you said, did you have a nice holiday? Yes, I really enjoyed it. You were actually doing what you were doing. Or, you know, did you enjoy meeting so-and-so? Yes, you were. Okay? So, <clears throat> what Mihaly, uh, Csikszent Mihaly found is that it, the conditions for happiness are not, you know, having a nice piece of chocolate or, you know, whatever it is. It's actually having these projects in which we can see how well we're doing and what it is we're trying to do um, and uh, work out how to do it better. And he found, for instance, people working on production lines, who think this would be the worst possible situation, who are able to do this. Uh, people who are, who are sports people, musicians, writers, everybody across the whole scale. Uh, parents who, who were very engaged with their children. It's this, so happiness isn't pleasure, and this is something also that Aristotle said, it's an engagement in what you are doing. All right, so um, the question then arises as to how do you measure uh, this? So uh, Salaby and company have got a test that they call the Mayer, Salaby and Caruso Emotional Intelligence Test, which measures people's abilities. So they actually give you pictures and say, all right, what's the person feeling in this photograph? Uh, they ask you, you know, if you want to do your income tax, what mood is it best to be in, etc., etc. Okay, so that's one way of measuring emotional intelligence. Now, the real question, of course, about emotional intelligence is, does it predict anything? Does it, in fact, make you a happier person? You know, does it, in fact, uh, uh, increase your salary? You know? um, so there's some evidence that people who scored high on the fourth branch here about managing their own and others' emotions had better relationships, uh, as seen both by themselves and by the other people with whom they were having relationships. So there's a research result um, with an indication. So it isn't that the whole of this thing called emotional intelligence works, but some bits of it do. So here's the big question then about emotional intelligence. Uh, what we find ourselves doing is entering this area of psychological testing. Now what psychological testing is about is, if you're a psychologist, is can you find something really quite simple, that only takes you half an hour to do, and predict whether uh, you're going to be, you know, a wonderful employee, or the sort of person who should be admitted to your particularly worthy institution if you're an educator, etc. So the idea of psychometrics is, um, what is it that we can do that we can measure easily which will predict uh, success in employment, education, relationships, and so on. Now, IQ scores for a long time have been used as a predictor in this way. Now, the history of IQ is actually extraordinarily seedy. Uh, IQ uh, was invented by a French guy called Binet in the early years of the last century. And he had a very good idea. So looking at an education in institute at school, there were some kids who really didn't seem to be getting along very well. But it wasn't quite clear who, who uh, to pick out and who uh, not to pick out. So he invented a test of ability. You know, could people do arithmetic? Did they know what the synonym 
for this word was, and so on. Where if they, if this was this simple idea, if they could, if the kids could do these things, then they were fine. If they couldn't do them, maybe they needed some extra help. And that's still the idea, I think, of lots of educational psychologists and clinical psychologists. And that's actually the place that IQ is important and still works um, and is an extremely important tool. Did you know, however, that uh, this um, curious idea that has, that has gone around, uh, that white people have higher IQs than black people? Do you, have you heard this? All right, let me tell you this. Again? this. To start with, when the Binet test uh, got exported to California, became the Stanford Binet test, it was standardized on boys. And then someone said, well, what about girls? All right, so they gave the test to girls, and the girls scored higher. <laughs> well, we can't have that, can we? <laughs> so they changed the questions. <laughs> And then someone said, well, what about black people? Well, they happen to score lower. Oh, well, we can have that, can't we? Mm -hmm. It gets worse. <laughs> you probably know that in the United States, there are quotas for immigration. These quotas were derived from IQ tests done on army uh, recruits. And what they found is that people who were immigrants from Eastern European um, uh, uh, nations had lower IQ than people who had immigrated from places, uh, you know, like, I don't know, Sweden or Ireland or something. Therefore, having a care for, you know, the American population, it was decided that immigration quotas for people from Ireland and Sweden and so on should be high. Immigration <coughs> quotas from places like uh, Ukraine, Poland, and so on, should be low. <coughs> it was only quite a while later on that it occurred to people that the IQ tests were written in English, and people from Ireland spoke English better <laughs> than people from Poland. <laughs> well, this policy, based on a piece of psychology, you see, then became responsible for the deaths of many uh, Jewish people in the Second World War. So, as I say, IQ is not an unmixed uh, thing. And then there's personality tests. These are about dispositions where you ask people, you know, are you generally gregarious at parties and things like that. If you are, then you score high on this trait here called, called extroversion. So needless to say, as well as these ideas of ability, there are also then tests of, of, uh, tr em of emotion, emotional intelligence as traits. <coughs> so you ask people, all right, how good are you, when you're angry, how good are you at controlling your anger? Very good, fine. Not bad, four. So-so, three. Quite bad, two. Terrible, one. Right? You ask people to rate themselves on these things. So that's then uh, a, um, uh, how this, as it were, second set of EQ tests have come out. And here are some of the kinds of, of issues that people are asked about. Okay, here is the grim and terrible truth about EQ. Every now and again, you can read a study where uh, a high score on, uh, on EQ predicts something. 